So the UK rental crisis, what's really going on? In the last four years, tenants have been faced with huge increases, the biggest in recent history, 33% over that time. Why is it happening? Um, what does it mean for landlord investors and tenants? Let's get into it. All right, cool. So, All right. Um, let's key go stats straight to into it. it off. Key stat. Dun, dun, dun. In August 2020, the average UK rent was £959 a month. Mm -hmm. But by June of this year, 2024, it surged to £1,299 a month. So that's a 35% increase in just four years. That's huge. Yeah, that's and massive. We've yeah. seen it in front of our very eyes. You know, we, we generally put rents up once a year and it was almost like a hockey stick. We mm. had landlords calling up when we, when we were putting rents up, section 13 or an extension sure. or whatever, yep. and it was, why haven't you put rent? I mean, that's a big jump. Mm. What, why didn't you put it? Well, because it wasn't like that a year. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It, it's gone up that much. It's gone up 100, 150 pounds in a year. Huge, that's huge massive. increases. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, um, it's an unprecedented spike. Yeah, but why? Why? Yeah, so uh, there's so a few reasons. Um, Landlords have been raising rents to offset their own rising costs. Mm. So, you know, mortgage interest rates. Mortgage interest rates, one the, the big yeah. one and the it's not latest just one. That, it's not just that. It's, it's worth ins mentioning the other stuff as well. It's their insurance. Mm -hmm. It's their cost of fixing things, maintenance. Yeah, maintenance you know, yeah. it's more expensive for a boiler now. Yeah. It's more expensive for an electrician now. It's more expensive for some fencing, yeah. you name it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think regulation and red tape needs to go in there a little mm -hmm. bit. It's not as much as maybe gets put in the press. You know, it's relatively easy to keep up with this stuff. You know, a gas certificate yeah. has been on the cards for a, yeah, for a yeah, long yeah. time. But now in EICR, Electrical yeah. Installation Condition Report, you need one. Yeah. Not we're, we're a big expensive. advocate of landlord licensing because we know it improves yeah, yeah, yeah. quality of houses, but there's a cost if you there's landlord. A cost so a landlord's right. naturally going to put yeah, his rent up yeah. to offset the cost of that. So in ERCR, only costs £100 or so, but if you ha then have to do two or £300 worth of work, yeah. that's an extra cost. Mm. Landlords run a business, and if their costs go up, then their, the price of their product goes up. And it might take a little while for that to kick in, sure. um, but all those things built up underneath and then interest rates hit, and that was the big one. Yeah. That's what's really big driven, time. driven that. Yeah. Out of those four years, you'd have seen a, a steady growth, and then kind of a mm -hmm. up, certainly in our areas, when interest Definitely. rates came in. So that's what landlords uh, have experienced, high costs <coughs> in particular, interest rates. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's reason number one. In, in some parts of the country as well, it's, it's a, a supply and demand issue. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, In some areas of the country, landlords have been leaving the market, and those houses have been being bought by um, you know, people who are going to live in them. So there's less rental stock in some areas. Yeah. You Even know? if, and, and I think that's, that, 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 that is happening, some landlords mm. are leaving. The number of landlords that are leaving and another investor buys that house is it's actually significant. It's a yeah. significant number. But still, the rent, that property will leave the rental market for a while. Won't yeah, it? exactly. We're talking about a four-year exactly. period. Maybe the rental market, maybe it, leaves, you know, it gets emptied out, it gets done up. Could be talking about a year, yeah. And if, and if yeah. that's a significant number over four years, that will definitely post COVID as well. Saw um, a shift from people that, um, who were happy living in shared accommodation before, mm -hmm. wanting their own place, not wanting to live with four or five people who also had for some friends coming in and out and stuff. They just yeah. wanted their own place, you know, just lock that, me down, that sort of thing. That's that that for ever, literally forever, since the, since the war, we've been not building enough houses. Mm. The obvious question, and everybody gets, well, where does everybody live in then? Well, they're living at home, or yeah, yeah. May, or house share, and that, I want to get out, I want to leave, that's massive uh, uh, numbers of people who want to want, want to move out, want mm -hmm. to, move to move to a property. Mm -hmm. So that's the, uh, the demand side, or the supply side, depending on which way you're looking at buying or selling. Um, so the number of rental properties has been shrinking, Many landlords. Only, the only in smells. In a lot of the areas where, where we are, there's the demand's really, really high. Mm. Um, but you see, in you know, there's always different factors. My net migration's up, so that's having mm. an impact because those people are more likely to rent. So in certain areas yeah. of the country, then you have more interest from renters, but then obviously that hits the, the supply as well. Yeah. Uh, in uh, net, mi net, net migration, influx of 1.5 million people in two years. So most new arrival 
rent. Mm. We've seen that. We've, we've seen we've the, seen the, the significant uh, numbers noticeable on the referencing. We've got to do a right to rent check, and yeah. if you've got an English passport, it's very easy. It just goes through. Of course. If you've got a different type of passport, it, you, you just notice it. So that's that's on that side of the column, almost like going through the passport control. You see the side mm. of the queue. So yeah, um, yeah, we can we can see that. Um, it's worth mentioning. Yeah, few, fewer people can afford to buy a home, so sure. therefore they've got to rent. Yeah. The average age of the first time buyer just keeps going, going up and up and up. Um, Most definitely. So, yeah, that that's due to mortgage rates for buyers. So that, that that's happening. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that that's the the supply and demand side. Um, do you want to just sort of break down the supply yeah. problem? Because I think that's that's important. Because yeah, although landlords selling properties might seem neutral, you know, owner occupier goes in. Putting those two things together that we were talking about a minute ago, fewer younger people, that generation rent, live in owner-occupied homes more than the rent. So yep. that is fueling the... Uh, the, the Definitely. More people can meet, well. competing for the same homes as well. Yep. So rents so rent, rent are naturally going to rise yeah. because of that. So, totally. Yeah, definitely. Supply and demand, I think that's broken down that bit. Um, high mortgage rates? Yep. I mean... We've been talking about mortgage rates a lot for the last mm. couple of years, but um, it prevents people from wanting to buy, so therefore keeps them in the rental market. But <laughs> with a higher rent, because the landlords have put the rent up because of the um, mortgage, uh, their own mortgage rates, which means you can save less. Um, you know, the UK population is growing, but the supply of rental properties has stayed pretty much the same for the better part of the last 10 years. Got a stat here, research. Go on. Yeah. UK's population has grown by over 2.2 million people mm-hmm. um, in, since 2015, but the rental property stock has stayed the same. There we go. So yeah, we, um, all the, I've, I found the other stat as well. So this is this is the one that uh, when we're talking about net migration, uh, my notes are over on, on the other page, but capital economics, that was the, the study I was looking for. It suggests that the immigration alone accounted for a third of the rental growth in recent wow. years. So, yeah, you pull supply and demand, you can see that supply is shrinking a bit, demand is growing, that's why rents are rising. Um, I think we've done that one. You can see why. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, in the top of the video, you said, is it easy? Would it carry on? Why, why? yes, but would it carry on? I think there are signs of a slowdown, mm-hmm. and I think the reasons, if you want to unpack it, they're, they're pretty clear. Um, it's a it, positive sign, if you, if you want to think of it this way, if, you, if you're a tenant, it certainly is. Um, it was a RIC survey recently, indicates um, only 38% of surveyors expect rents to rise still, and that's down, the, the most important bit there, because 38 is still quite high. But that's down for sixty six percent in twenty twenty one. Yeah, well, so I can understand that. People are it's moving area, less as well. It's area specific. Yeah. yeah, people are just staying in their rental house because they know how much it would cost to move. That is very true. Yeah. So we are seeing our you know, demand is still. Um, if you want to move, you want to move, obviously. Yeah. Um, but the number of properties that um, come vacant are renewals, right? Um, yeah, it's uh, down. It's down. Yeah, yeah. V- v- k rates. Uh, people are staying longer because the cost to move is higher. Usually you're in a house that you're renting where the, you're probably paying a little bit below market rent mm. and you look around at the market, everything's more expensive for, or for a worse house. Yeah, so you stay. Um, so you stay. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, what I would say though, regional differences are still there. So um, there's London and the South and there's the rest of the country a lot of the time. Um, but the demand for rental properties in the Midlands and the North we still see that as very strong. Mm. The HMO market's a weird one right now. There's a lot of void that's HMO multiple occupation, yeah. house shares. Yeah. Um, that's down. Um, but no, um, there's always been regional disparities. Yep. There always has been. Um, the uh, rents are falling in some parts of the south. They're not falling in our areas. They've gone up a lot, and oh. they kind of some bits they're staying the same. Some bits they're just still tweaking up a little definitely, bit. Definitely not falling. Definitely yeah, not falling. But, but yeah, in, in in parts of London and. Yeah, other, other but they were the already south, insane. But they, 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 I think like they've, they've, they've gone over a, yeah. the peak and then exactly. Out. I don't think in in our areas. So we are East Midlands, Mid Midlands generally, North East, North West. That sort of um, yeah, up north. Uh, and yeah, I don't I don't think we got to a point where rents were massively unaffordable. They were mm. high, but now wages are going to catch up. I'll be honest with you. I sit down with clients all the time. 
I either help them grow their portfolio or help them optimize an existing one. Mm. That's what we do. We're a property investors letting agent. Um, very often a client who has been self-managing, will I will find that their rents are well below the market rent. So we can still help those guys put their rents up. Yeah. Um, properties that are with an agent, you will always find them typically at market rate. Yeah. So I think signs of a slowdown mm. in parts of the country, probably going in reverse. In the areas of Midlands and, and up north, it's just a slowdown. Yeah. We'd, I don't think we're going to see things going backwards. Still, maybe a few rent. I'm still going through some rent increases now. They are less than they were a year ago. Sure. But they're still. Going yeah, yeah. In. I can so do that. So twenty-five, that fifty pounds. Moves on. Actually, what you should do if you're an landlord or an investor. That's the important bit, isn't it? Yeah. Check your pricing. Yeah. You no. Know? Don't assume you can always raise your rent. But also make sure you're actually at the market rate. Research the local market. Um, use the tools that are out there. Really, you should have an agent. If you're an investor landlord and you're self-managing, don't. You'll be making loads of mistakes that you don't even realise you're making. Um, you need an It'll agent. It's costing you money. You, yeah. you, the, the reasons to self-manage are purely to save money. I mean, nobody does Pretty much. Or yeah. keep yourself busy and occupied. That's a yeah, reason. you'll still make mistakes. You'll make mistakes. Yeah, they'll they'll be too close money. to it. Um, yeah. Avoid the void. An empty property costs you money. Mm. So if it's priced right and if the house is right and it's in the right area and it's nice, a tenant will want to live there and they'll pay the market rate. Um, again, are you using an estate agent, a letting agent? Um, and you know, evaluate your rental increases carefully. Each time a tenancy comes up for renewal, reassess the market to determine if the rental increase is justified. You might already be at a good rate, you know? Yeah. And, um, and not just every time it comes on the market again, do it annually. Mm. Section 13 increase, yeah, yeah. an extension to the tenancy. It locks the tenant and gives both you and the tenant peace of mind. If they've been a good tenant for the last year, why not sign up a new tenancy agreement? Um, stops it going periodic, which has got its own problems. Sure. Periodic tenancy. Uh, it means your tenant's got to give notice, they've got to stay. Yeah. They're contracted, so that gives you income stability. Um, and at the same time, negotiate a, a small increase in rent to the market rent. Like you say, you've got to be really careful that um, you're at the right point. Now, in, interesting topic on, I mean, we won't go into too much, there's a whole video on this, putting your rents up. There's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about completely gouging the no. tenant. You know, that won't work because the tenants will leave. Little by little. Little by little. Mm -hmm. And it's actually fair on the tenant. Um, of course. It's fair all round. And as a business owner, a landlord, because you own a business, it's fair on you because every yeah. single thing has gone up. Um, so you just need to be really careful to manage that. I've got I've got another you know, point here, and um, this just trips off the tongue. But I, you you were mentioning, you know, what should you do as a landlord? Um, get a letting agent, mm -hmm. yeah. and then we started talking about you making um, mistakes that you might not know about, and whatever. We've got eight ways that any landlord can increase their profits. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Voids, bad debts, maintenance, put your rent up, put your mortgage down, make sure your compliance is right because that'll bite you and cost you money. Um, make sure that your tax affairs are right, get a good accountant. And then the last one is if it's all working right, buy another house. Yeah. Do, 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 that's eight things. So we run a review. Adam, you could sit down with him and say, right, I'm a landlord or I want to be. Um, and here are my plans, mm -hmm. and you'd apply those eight things across an existing portfolio or to the plans to grow a portfolio. And that alone would pay for an agent by yeah. a long, long of course. way. Because if you yeah. run it that tight, <clears throat> if you've got professional management, what gets measured gets managed. We all know that. You've got an agent looking after it all day, every day, as opposed to you doing it on a Sunday afternoon once a month or maybe mm. every other month, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, it really does make the difference. You're talking about, so on, on, on our, our eight things, voids, bad debts, they're huge. Yeah. So most landlords leave the void far too long. So don't forget those. And then the other ones are, you know, make sure the market rent, make sure your mortgages, we put you in touch with a good mortgage broker. Most definitely. Honestly, for the last year, that wouldn't have been much use, would it? But now you're going to start getting um, uh, reduced mortgage rates. I'm just starting to refinance some stuff now where I've been sitting on it for for a while. So I think that's everything we know. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's, that's everything in a nutshell. Um, so the, the days of double digit rent increases are probably behind us. Uh, things are slowing off in certain parts of the UK, they're going backwards. But if you pick it right, um, they're still going up nicely, so your yields are right. Uh, be prepared, 
look at those eight ways you can increase your, your profits and, and put that into, uh, um, into practice. Keeping it in line with inflation rather than trying to maximise every mm -hmm. pound in this day and age, because I think that will scare off your tenants. Yeah. So, I yeah. think that's, that, that's, Thank you. Uh, that's everything. Don't forget, um, like, subscribe if you found this useful, share it with your friends, um, follow the link in the bio, in the description, and um, book a call with me if you want to talk about anything property related. Thank you. Cheers. Bye for now.